So let's look at the pictures and see what we want to do. We want to do cutouts for the for the doors. That's one thing we need to do. So again, I click the side and I click create a sketch. And we can barely see the door there. And now I will do the door separately, so I will only make a big cutout here so I can uh, make the door separate. Uh, you can see that there's a blue line that lights up when I'm holding the mouse here. That's the inner wall because we have a two millimeter thick wall. So it's important not to try to make this hole so it cuts in the wall. So let's see how wide we did that. So we can make the other one the same width. And also let's check the heights. 35.5 and just to make it simple we'll make it 35 13 35 and I'll make the same thing on the other side but now I will start here because I know here that the wall is 2 millimeter you can see that fusion tries to snap to the wall it also likes to snap here so that's a good starting point because then you know you're placing it in the right place so we make it 13 wide and Oh, 35 height. Now again I will click extrude and I will choose these two rectangles that I just draw. Do so. Fusion automatically figures out that I want to cut. And sometimes it can be important to check with this uh, drop down here to check objects to cut because if you have something, uh, some other parts in the way, Fusion might think that you want to cut them as well, even if they're in another component. So check here because if you have other components, just unclick them. So there we are. Now we have the cutouts for the doors. So let's continue with the roof. And we can see that we have some something going on here in the side of the roof that we want to incorporate. Maybe we'll have that in the in the body as well. Let's see. Yeah, there are some some horizontal texture here, some something going on that we want to have because it in, it increases the scale look of it. So let's see what we can do. Now a really neat thing if, is if you if you um, if you figure out you want to do something um, that you should have done before you cut out the windows and doors for example, you can always go down go back in the history. And that's that's really really neat because um, we can now add things that will be cut through um, later on. So let's make a sketch from the side here. And let's draw a small rectangle just 0.2 millimeter thick and uh, let's make it let's see 2 millimeter long and oops sorry I'll click extrude and sometimes you have to click first the arrow and then we click on this other surface so Fusion knows we want to extend it to there then we don't need to know the exact dimension all the time because we want it to end up flush with the, with the end here uh, we don't care exactly how long it is as long as it's the same length now the thing is we don't want to join this we want to create a new body we will join it later so click new body so this thing we just did, oops, sorry, now I see that I have the 
um, the whole project activated. I don't want to create it here, so I'll try to move it because I want to work in the body now. So let's see if we can move it. No, we cannot. Uh, I will click Control Z and I will undo this. And I will activate the body. So let's redo that. The reason I'm doing this is otherwise uh, the things I'm doing will end up in the wrong place. I want to work in the components. This is a mistake. Uh, it's really easy to do and it can really mess up things. So make sure you are actually working with the right component activated. Uh, otherwise it will be a mess in the end. So let's redo our small rectangle here. And I click D for dimension when I want to insert a dimension. I click the two things I want to specify a dimension in between. And let's extrude this. And again, click New Body. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place a lot of these uh, along the side. But first we want to make the edges round. So I hold the command button if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC. And then I select all the edges. And I can either click F or I can click modify and fill it. You can see that you can see the the button commands here right beside the, the buttons. So F for fill it. And uh, I cannot do more I think now than 0.2 millimeters because that's the thickness of the part. We'll see. Uh, yeah it, it, it is possible. Sorry. Uh, let's make it a bit more. We can just try and see what looks good. Let's make it 0.6. Now again we're going to try to make a pattern and see if it works. But this time we will not choose faces, we will choose bodies and this is the reason why we created a separate body. And the path we will work with is this one because we don't want to do it vertically. And now the number, the quantity is uh, something you just have to test what looks good. What I'm looking for here is to have uh, roughly the same distance between these parts and the thickness of them. It's not important how many you do. That's worked really well. So let's use that and see uh, see how it looks. So what we'll do now is um, we'll join all these bodies. So I'm holding shift and I'm selecting all the bodies and I click combine. That will make this into one body. And to get all these part on the other side as well I will try to mirror it now without splitting it first. We'll see how that looks. We click mirror and one object was already selected. If, it, if it's not it's just to select it to click on it. And make sure you have bodies selected here. And then we click mirror plane and it's important then to click the center plane. And then we click OK and we'll see what happens. Yeah, now we have now we have basically two bodies that are just mirrored, but in the same spot, so it, it doesn't look like it's two of them. But let's say now, if we had some 
irregularities if we had uh, if we had one side longer than the other then we will we would see that right now because the walls would not end up in the same place but we don't want this to be two bodies we need, we want to combine them again so we we click combine there now just to uh, to make it a bit easier if you get some really strange behavior now and errors i will show you a different way that you can do this that might be better so i will just go back and i will erase the mirror now what i usually do if i do this um, i click on split body and i click on the body i want to split and uh, the splitting tool will be the center plane now it will split this in half and i will only use the half where i created these uh, extra parts so the other one i will right click and choose remove don't click delete because that will mess up your model now we're sure that we only that we will only mirror uh, one side we will not mirror the the other side as well because that can create uh, that can create a lot of problems as we're working a lot with just visual references our dimensions are not always exact and that can create that can create a lot of headache so now when we click mirror we click we select bodies we click our body we select mirror plane we select the plane again now we're sure that there's only one body on each side and we will not get any surface problems or any problems with irregularities also because we split it exactly at the center plane we also know that uh, the seam here will be exact so now we can go ahead and join these two combine them <coughs> now we have one one solid body so what happens to our doors and our windows now because we have made this a little bit thicker so we will have some strange behavior so let's see here let's um, let's roll the history forward and see yeah you can see here now that these are in front of the window but that's easy to adjust uh, we just right click and click edit feature and now you can see here that is uh, on one side we click two sides because that gives us the ability to extrude on in uh, in two directions there and now let's see what happens with our pattern it might screw up the pattern no it didn't it worked well so let's do the same thing with the door it looks like a jail door so you can also there's one there's one other thing you can do you can just click symmetric and that means you don't have to pull any arrows it will just do the same distance on both sides and as we're only cutting now it doesn't matter how far we pull the arrow so We'll do that now just to show. So there we go. Now we have a little bit more interesting surface here. Now what we w what we could want to do now is that around the windows and around the doors, um, it can be a problem to attach um, to attach a frame here if these things that we created now goes all the way to the edge of the window so what we can do about that is we can we can click here um, yeah let's do that and create a sketch and I click R for rectangle and I select the window and I double click to select the rectangle that I just draw 
and uh, I click O for offset because now I want to remove I, wa I want to make the the surface flash around the window so I can put a frame here and let's, so let's see how much we want to do um, two and a half is a little bit wide actually but I don't want to have a small small edge of this piece here so let's make it two and a half anyway So uh, let's click extrude. And now because of the fact that we placed the sketch on uh, on the on the inner surface here, it means we will remove the parts that we don't want around the window. So now the surface is flat flush here. Kind of looks a bit odd. Let's look at the picture. No, we can do we can do the frame so that the frame goes down here, so so it will not look so empty. Now I will try to make a um, to make a pattern with this as well. It might not work. But we'll we'll try, so we'll see how far we did with the windows. Two hundred and, uh, and a lot of decimals. So let's uh, let's make that two hundred and two. So we have an even number to work with. So two hundred and two and seven qu quantity seven. Because we will do the pattern of the last thing we did now with the same distance um, as this, 202 millimeters, and also seven repetitions. We will try at least. So let's see. We try to create a pattern with a feature. And we select 202. It's not, I'm not sure about this. It will probably not work, but let's try. Oh, it did not work. This is really annoying in Fusion. Maybe someone in the comments can uh, tell me why it does this. So, what we'll do is. Uh, We'll do this the, the old-fashioned way. We only have seven windows, so it's not a it's not a big deal to just draw them. This takes two or three minutes more, but it's worth it. We're going to do an experiment here to see if we can make an offset from all of them at once. Well, that's weird. Maybe I didn't double click good enough. Now we have all of them, and we will extend them two and a half millimeter, the same as the other one. Here we go. Now our extrusion we did now only we only had the first one selected, so uh, we can either make a new one or we can just double click on this extrusion because we modified the same sketch 
So what I can do now is I can hold in the command button and I can select more profiles. There we go. Now we will at least try to um, to mirror this. So we click mirror and we click features and we click this latest feature and we click mirror plane and we click OK and let's see what happens. Ta -da, it worked good for a change. Now we want to do the same thing with the doors. Uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can reuse the sketch and the extrude again. Just double click on the sketch and uh, I click R and I add a rectangle around the door as well. As you can see, I didn't choose a dimension there. What I did is ju I just eyeballed to get the same height as the window. It actually lights up as a, a small line there to show me that it's in the same in the same height. And I also just choose a two millimeter frame around the door because I have two millimeter on the other side, so that will make it that will make it even. Now we click stop sketch. And uh, now we double click on the extrude to include the doors as well. And hold in the command button and choose all surfaces. click OK. Now it should also mirror this as well so we don't have to redo that. Yeah it also mirrored it. That's good. So let's do the window frame. One of the reasons to make this as a separate part is that you can print it in another color if you want a white window frame, for example, and a blue or something body. It's uh, a lot easier to do it this way. You don't have to have a multicolor printer. So what we do now is we want to place it on the on the side. So we click the side that gives our sketch a reference. And we'll click create a new sketch. And now we choose the outer dimension of our frame. Uh, or no, we will not do that. Uh, we will first create the inner, sorry. Uh, we double click on the on the edge. And again we choose O for offset. And what we want to do now is we want to have a really small offset here, 0 0.2 millimeter. Because this will be this will be our edge when we glue in the frame. We double click again on the original frame uh, and click O again. And um, we can use 1.2 millimeter. That gives us exactly one millimeter between the two lines we created. I highlight it and I click extrude. And I want this one to go in uh, a millimeter. Is no, no, we will have it the same thickness as the as the wall. We have it two millimeters. So this is this part is what makes our frame go into the right position when we glue it. So now we want to make the outer part of the frame, the visible part. We click on this surface, so. 
and create a new sketch. So now we want to draw the outer the outer dimensions of the frame. We can just start by clicking somewhere. You can, as you can see, you can uh, zoom in and out, and you will get different. Um, you, have, you will have different scalings um, on these lines, these uh, support lines, or what you should call them, where fusion snaps. But we can adjust the dimensions later, so it's not it's not important exactly where you place the lines. Now it's just to see how it looks. And you can decide things like, do you want the frame to be flush with this line here, and this line? That could be good for for its aesthetics. That's actually made it didn't make it as I thought. Yeah, collinear. That's what you should click. Sorry. There we have it. And then let's see how wide we want the frame on the sides. 1.7. Yeah, why not? Let's make the other one also 1.7. Good thing here is we only we only need to do one because we will we will print the same one for the others as well. Oh look, I made I actually made one window less than I thought. That's interesting. Um, but let's let's say it looks good anyway. So let's not care about that. Now the windows have uh, a little small sort of beam here in the middle, so I will click R for rectangle, and then we can barely see it behind here. And I zoom in so I get somewhere to place to place the line. There, and I need to make it thick enough so it will print. So now I think we have what we need. So let's click extrude. And then we click on all the surfaces we want to extrude. Oh wait a minute, we will do it. We will do it a little bit different different. We will only click this one and we will extrude because we want this frame to be to be strong enough, so we will actually make that one ex uh, extend two millimeter inside. Now we can make the outer part. So click extrude, and now we choose all the surfaces. Now on the outside of the car, we don't want it to be that thick, so let's make it 0.5 millimeter. You can probably make it even even thinner than that. Yeah, let's make it 0.4. I often use 0.2 millimeter layer height, so this will mean two layers, but. I recommend when you print this that you print it with the thinner layers when you do this frame so that it looks good. 